But sometimes I'll just reach out to you and be like, I have this crazy idea. Can you do it? And yeah. And you'll be like, yeah, I, I think I can do that. And then you make a video about it and you put it on your YouTube channel. And it's so funny sometimes like the red dish soap bar yeah. last year, your whole video is like, I don't know how I'm going to make this red. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Let's figure it out. I don't know. And I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's the thing. Reds are hard and soap just in general. So I was so proud of myself that I was able to do that for that, di that dish soap. That was, that was a big win for me. I love it. The other one is the, um, the white peach sangria bar. Yeah. Um, cause I didn't even think about the fact that like, there's no peach oil. Yeah. And so you were like, how am I going to make a peach? And it smells like peaches. Yeah. Like yeah. you would think that you just like squeezed a peach into that soap. Yeah. It's wild. And that's part of the fun that I have with, again, with your, your, uh, wholesale account specifically, because I get to play around with that and see if I can make it. So, and as a result, I'm always playing around with essential oil blends, just waiting for you to call again and be like, Hey, can we do a new one? I have one I'm working on. So today is a very, very cool day. It was pre-filmed, uh, but you know, the, the, the thing that we're doing. But today I get to talk to one of my favorite people on the planet. And I'm introducing to you one of my favorite people on the planet. And you get to talk to one of my favorite people on the planet. You don't really get to talk to her. Uh, this was pre-filmed, as I already said. This is not live. You get it but you get to listen to us talk to each other about really cool stuff. And I'll tell you more about that and why in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 233 of 365 days of soap, and today we're making soapy connections. We are doing an interview with one of my favorite people on the planet, who also happens to be one of my wholesale accounts. That is also one of my favorite wholesale accounts. And so we are doing an interview with a drop in the ocean, and the owner of a drop in the ocean, Christina. And the reason why we're doing this was actually Christina's idea because once a month over on her side of the social world and whatevers, she has been doing uh, kind of like vendor showcases. And so she's been interviewing her vendors, kind of putting faces to the products and really helping solidify this beautiful eco warrior movement that she has going on, which I love. Thought it was a great idea. And so I asked her if I could also interview her during the time that we, that she interviewed me. And so we're doing that thing. And I actually, in doing that, decided that it was actually a pretty good idea to do more of on my channel as well. And so I've been thinking about reaching out to some of my vendors, you know, like our fragrance, our favorite fragrance companies, our favorite mica supply companies, etc., to uh, see if they would be willing to come chat with us about the things that make our business go and their very important place in our making. So. Look out for those for sure. And you know, lots of year three content will also be coming from this. Not necessarily vendor specific, but you specific Sudzers. So I know, I know. I've been teasing year three content since day 100 of year two, but it's gonna be a blast. So anyway, this, this interview actually is a little bit long, but it's worth every single moment. It's absolutely enjoyable. I love Christina with my whole heart. And I am excited for you guys to, you know, meet her and talk about her really amazing company and how the things that she does impacts the entire world 
in really awesome ways. So let's get to the interview now. So today we are here with Christina, who is the owner of A Drop in the Ocean. And I almost called it a drop in the ocean shop.com because I say it so much in my YouTube videos. And we are going to talk about what a drop in the ocean even is, why she is doing the crazy, awesome eco warrior thing and like who she is as a human and why we love her so much. So hello, Christina. Hi, Shantine. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for putting this all together. I love the idea when you uh, messaged me and said you wanted to do a collab for your thing. And I'm like, yeah, can I do it for mine too? Yes. It was perfect. So this worked <laughs> out really well. And I'm very excited about this. So before we get um, too terribly into it, you do need to introduce yourself and uh, tell the Sudzers because they've seen you in the comments and stuff and they've seen your products. Who are you? What is a drop in the ocean? And all the things. And all of the things. So I'm Christina, Christina Jarvis, and I own A Drop in the Ocean. We are a sustainable living and zero waste shop. So we are trying to help everyday people live lighter on the planet. And we do that with refillable and sustainable alternatives to everyday common products that we all use. And a big part of that is unpackaged bar soaps instead of like plastic packaged, you know, shampoo, conditioner, dish soap, all of those kinds of things. Um, we are based in Tacoma. We're completely online, uh, but we ship nationwide and internationally. I've shipped, I've had a few orders from Canada recently. I think I had one order in like Norway a couple months ago. I don't know. That's um, amazing. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how they're finding me, but, um, yeah, so I can ship anywhere. And, you know, a lot of the questions that I get with our refillable products, because that's something that a lot of people come to us for, is how that works. So if it's okay with you, I'll give a brief overview on how that works for people. I would actually love that because that's something that I was going to ask you about and the sort of trials and tribulations you might experience with all of that, because the refillable can be a really tough thing to figure out. So any ideas would be great. Let us know how you worked it out. Yeah. So first of all, one of the things that I'm really proud of with the drop in the ocean is that all of our refillable products are actually a closed loop system, meaning that we're not creating any waste in the process of getting your products to you, which is not something that every zero waste shop can say. But we work with a local company. And so we are able to bring empty containers to them. They will fill them like empty, like gallon jugs and five gallon buckets. They'll fill them, give them back to me. And then when they're empty, we'll go back and swap them out over and over again, which is really exciting. So then the way that it works to get products to our eco warriors is if they're in Tacoma, it's kind of like the old school milkman refill program. So for example, if you were to buy a bottle of shampoo from us, it will come in an aluminum bottle with a plastic pump and you will use it up. And then when it runs low, you'll order another one from us, but you'll order a refill and it'll come in an aluminum bottle with an aluminum cap, no pump. And then you leave your empty, empty bottle on your porch on delivery day, keep the pump, and then we'll swap out the containers. You put the pump on the new one, and then you just keep using the pump over and over again. So that's not going to waste. We cool. take back the empty one, wash it, reuse it, sanitize it, all of that. So that's how we do it locally. And then if you're outside of Tacoma, it's kind of the same thing, but we do it through the mail. So we ship all of our orders through USPS because they're coming to your house anyway. We don't ship FedEx or UPS or any of those because then that would be creating extra emissions. Huh, what a cool thing to think about. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. You, you're covering all the bases here. I'm sorry for interrupting. I love that. Continue. No, that is okay. It's not something that a lot of people think about. And so right. I, I try to slip that in there when I can to, you know, be like, hey, this is something to think about when you're ordering from a company. Right. So basically, same kind of thing. Order a bottle of shampoo. It's going to come with a pump, blah, 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 blah. Order a new one, refill. But when we mail it to you, again, it won't include a pump, but we will include a return label in the box that your new shampoo is coming to you in. So unbox it, pull out your shampoo, put the pump on, on the new one. And then you can just put the empty bottle back in that same box, put the return label on it and hand it off to USPS. 
at no extra charge to you. And it'll come back to us. We'll wash, reuse it, sanitize it. And then we also can keep that box in circulation, keep the packing materials in circulation, all of that. So we're reusing everything. I love that. That's actually really amazing. And as you were saying that, I was sort of thinking, well, God, this, uh, cause I know what it costs to ship things, you know? And I'm like, so you're eating so much money. And on one hand, yeah, you were eating some costs for shipping, but on the other hand, you were only buying your, uh, your packaging. You're only buying that, that bottle one time. Yeah. So you have the initial investment as opposed to people who are continuing to have having to buy their packaging, say like a plastic jar or, you know, one of these doesn't come back to me. Well, that pack, that is two bucks on its own, you Mm -hmm. know? And so you're actually kind of, because you get to reuse the packaging, you're minimizing the amount that you are putting up front for the, um, for the actual shipping to come back to you. I love that. That's very cool. So it's even better when people are purchasing like multiple things at once um, because then they can send back multiple things and then it helps to offset that that shipping cost because it is a cost that we have. Okay, so Christina looks a little bit different right now because she had uh, some screeching in her headset and it was me, but also interference. So now she's without headset. Yay. Without headset. So yeah, I was talking about uh, shipping and I'm going to have to talk to you about how you're managing to do shipping um, internationally without it breaking the bank. So we'll have to chat while I'm continuing to rebuild my website for sure, because that is one thing while the shipping prices continue to change that you always have to pay attention to as a small business owner, which is something that I think more people should maybe keep in mind when they are choosing to order from small businesses and whatnot, we are not Amazon. We cannot eat that cost for absolutely everything. So it's cool that you do eat so much of it. I do as well, because I do have the flat rate shipping and then free shipping over a certain amount. But people sort of just get really mad when it's like, well, I just spent $5 on an item. Why should I have to spend five bucks for shipping? Because that's what it costs. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, because if you're not paying for that five dollars in shipping, then I'm paying for it, and now I'm losing money on the five dollar soap you right. bought. I just lost money, and this right. is a business. I love you guys, but it is still a business, so. right? Right. And if I'm losing money, I won't be a business for much longer. Exactly. And then you won't get your five dollar bar of soap. <laughs> exactly. Then it's no more. So speaking of business, how did you start Drop in the Ocean? What's your background? Why did you decide to do this? Why is this uh, such a big and awesome passion for you? So I have a very winding road to how I got to where I am now. So my background is actually in wildlife conservation. I, Growing up, most of my life, I really like all of my life until I was like 22, um, thought I wanted to be a zookeeper. And that was, that was my goal. And then in college, I was majoring in wildlife science and I interned at a zoo, very quickly discovered I did not want to be a zookeeper, mad respect for them. They work so hard, crazy hours, so emotionally intensive, labor intensive, just mad respect to zookeepers, but it was not for me. But I still loved the zoo world and I still wanted to be involved in it. And so I kind of shifted focus and I decided that I wanted to move into like zoo conservation. And so I got another internship at the zoo and I was working not in conservation, but I was working around all of the conservation people in the same kind of department as them. And then when a job opened up in the conservation department, I was like, basically already there and they knew me. So it was pretty easy for me to get that job. And so that's what I was doing for three years. In that time, I knew I wanted to move up in in that world. And to do that, I was going to need more education. So I went back to school. I was getting my master's in uh, conservation biology. And around that same time, a coworker shared a video of somebody who was trying to go zero waste for 30 days. And I had never heard of zero waste at the time. I had considered myself an environmentalist my whole life, but I had never considered like my personal impact. For me, conservation was like, 
I have to travel to Africa and save elephants. Like that was conservation for me. And so zero waste kind of like rocked my world. And I was like, oh, wait, like there are actually things that I can do every day that will help elephants in the wild. Maybe not directly, but but it will. And so I just, I went down the rabbit hole. I read like all the books. I was reading all the blogs. I was watching all the videos, you know, watching all the documentaries, everything. And then I just like, I had to like share the information with people, right? And so then through that process and because of the the job that I had at the zoo, I had an audience that was already interested in conservation and sustainability. And so I was able to start a plastic-free challenge internally at the zoo Whoa. that was absolutely incredible and grew from the first year was 193 people internally at the zoo. And now it's still going on. And it's actually like an international thing that's getting thousands of people every year. That's amazing. It was, it's still one of like my pride and joys, you know, and then of course, through that process, I really learned how to communicate these issues. And I was also in school where I was able to focus my research and my projects on this kind of thing and like what the best practices are for getting people involved in in conservation work. So that was really kind of the start of it was just me personally living more zero waste and just like unashamedly telling everybody about it and talking about it, never in a judgmental way, of course, just right. sharing knowledge and information. And then I started to see all the videos of zero waste shops opening in Europe. And all of these videos were like, you know, share this video if you want to see something like this in your hometown. And I remember thinking, you know, that's really great and all, but sharing a video doesn't mean that it's actually going to open in your hometown. Like somebody actually has to step up and do the thing. And then around this time, I was kind of realizing that like, I, I love the zoo world, but it was basically impossible to move up in it. And so I was kind of thinking, you know, like, what, where do I go next? What, what do I do? And I was sitting at brunch with some friends. We were having a girls weekend in Chicago one, one weekend. And I'm sitting at brunch. One of my friends was living in Tacoma at the time. She still does. And I said, I don't know, guys, I kind of want to just run away to Tacoma and open a zero waste store. Look what you did. And then I did it. It was like, <laughs> So my friend who's in Tacoma uh, was like, well, actually, wait a second. Tacoma could really use that. You should really do that. And about a year later, I quit my job and I broke my apartment lease and I packed up my car and I moved to Tacoma and did it. I don't have a business background. I didn't know what I was doing, I, but I, I had the, the education background at that point. And I, I had the, the knowledge of the products and, you know, I was really passionate about like actually sustainable products, not greenwashed products. And I wanted to be that resource for other people that I wish that I had had when I started. So I, yeah. And so when I tell that story and I'm like, so yeah, I just did it. Like, that's really kind of how it felt was just yeah. hacking up and doing it and figuring it out as I go. That's amazing. And that, cause it's a, it's a hard thing to start a business like for sure. And so many people actually continue to, you know, work their nine to five and do whatever and sort of bootstrap um, a business, a startup or whatever, which you were doing to a point you were working a job. It was not your job, but it was a job when I met you and when you had started the business and you actually moved full time into the drop in the ocean like a year ago now, right? Mm -hmm. Almost yep. a year. Yeah. And that's just so incredible. And I knew that you didn't have a business background when we first met and you were doing the same thing. And I was so shook it with everything because you built your own website. You're great at the social medias. And it feels to me that you have been able to do this. I mean, A, you're obviously a very smart person. So you're able to teach yourself these things. But I think maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the things that really kept you on this and motivated to keep the website going and the socials and whatever is because you like the education piece more than just the necessarily, oh yeah, we're eliminating plastics. Like I'm going to be your survive. I'm going to be your, your point of contact for if you want to eliminate plastics, you're going to say why we should eliminate plastics and 
what greenwashing is and stuff like that, because your Instagram and your blog posts and everything, they're so informative. Like you teach. Is that wrong? Do you really like the education behind it? I do. I really do. I like our, our weekly email series is like one of my favorite things. We've been doing that every week, give or take a couple of weeks um, for the last two years. We started it in the new year of 2020 and it's been so fun and so fulfilling for me because, yeah. you know, some of them, like, you know, when we first started, it was basically all just like, here's knowledge that's already in my brain, brain dump. Here you go. And some of them still are. But we're getting to this point now where I'm like, okay, time to go back to my like research days and actually like dig into like new topics that I don't really know about, but I want to know about my community wants to know about. And it's, it's really fulfilling. I really like that. And I never want it to just be a store, you know, like our, our vision statement for a drop in the ocean is a sustainable future for all living things. And our mission is to use business as a force for good. Nowhere in there is it help you be zero waste, right? Reduce waste. It's it's a whole like ecosystem that I'm trying to create with a drop in the ocean. And that's beautiful. And it's such a different way of actually approaching a business and so and approaching really your consumers and your your community. And I think that's one of the many reasons why you've been so successful with all of this. And so it's very exciting to watch you continue to grow and thrive and be. And for the education piece, yeah, it's really cool that you continue. I remember having a conversation with you. I don't know. Time has no meaning anymore. But we were having a conversation about glass, right? And you're like, yeah, no, I'm having to go back and do some research and stuff on glass products right now because also there's some troubling pros and cons here. And I find that really important in anything that you're doing to continue to research and stay, you know, abreast of all situations because otherwise, what's the point? Right. And that's very amazing that you that you do all of that and that you had such a firm, really foundation in mind of what you wanted your business to be before setting out, you know, before doing it. And you've really been a source of interesting information and perspective changing for me. Uh, you know, and I too, in one of those people who are like, yeah, no, I'm totally into saving the planet. Mm -hmm. But then you start thinking about it in different ways. And it's like, and the zero waste movement is fascinating and really very cool as you start to make cognizant changes that, as you said, saves the elephants in different ways. Yeah. And like with you, one of the things that you do in your line, you are 100% palm free for the products that I create for you, as well as probably everything else. Mm -hmm. And I've done deep dives on the, uh, on the YouTubes for about palm before. And we were talking about like the rainforest and, and, you know, deforestation and everything. And while all of my palm is responsibly sourced, so that's not happening mm -hmm. just by your removal from that, because it's easy enough to remove, you know? Mm -hmm just you removing that and choosing not to, it is actually continuing to help the regrowth of the Amazon and you know, whatever small little things here make bigger impacts down the road. And yeah. I will, I will say some of our products do have sustainably sourced palm oil. I, yeah. I agree with you completely about like sustainably sourced palm oil is still, is still great. You know, of course the, the round table on sustainable palm oil has its issues and sure. everybody knows that. I think if you're, if you care about that issue, um, so some of our products do have sustainably sourced palm oil and I'm very upfront about that. Uh, but one of the things I always say is that like, I will never have a product in the shop that has unsustainably sourced palm oil. Like yeah. that is a hard line for me will not happen. I have, I have a friend who, when we first met, he like didn't know or care anything about sustainability or zero waste or anything. And he tells me all the time that because I'm so unjudgmental, it made him want to do more. You know, I, if I, he's, he said like, if I had looked at him and been like, Oh, I can't believe you're using a plastic straw. He'd be like, well, oh, I'm going to use more of them. But because I was like, I don't care that you're using a plastic straw. He was like, well, dang it. Now I don't want to use a plastic straw. <laughs> now I have guilt. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, you know, we, we can't all do everything and it's not possible to be a hundred percent zero waste in our current economy. Sure. And so, you know, I, I don't 
usually, like they're very rarely feel guilt when I have to use plastic or when I have to use something disposable. Um, because I know that like, I'm doing the best that I can when I can, where I can with what I have. And so that's always what I'm trying to encourage people to do is just do what you can. And then when you have the space and the time and the money and the resources and whatever to do more, or when you learn more, then do more. Yep. And I love that. I think that's a great way to look at really everything that we do in life. You know, like we all go through life as long as we are reasonably doing the best that we can and the best that we are, you know, capable of slash are aware of positive changes will still be made. Um, We're not going to fix our eco problem in a day. We're not going to fix it in a generation, but that doesn't mean that we can't do our part now in whatever way we can. So that's good. I love that you are doing this and that you are such a good place for information and for products. So, I mean, outside of what I give you and make for you, what other uh, zero waste, eco-friendly things do you have for your eco warriors? Oh, we have lots of things. We've added a lot of things in the last few months. Like I have just been on a spree of adding new products. Um, so my living room is kind of closing in on me right now. (laughs) Um, but some of like my favorite things that we have, um, stainless steel safety razors are my favorite swaps ever. Uh, they're they're So again, they're hundred percent stainless steel. So they're totally metal, totally recyclable. They are the closest shave I've ever had. No razor burn. Um, and they're way cheaper. I cut myself less than I used to actually. A lot of people look at them and they're like, oh, that's terrifying. And I'm like, if you watch like a YouTube video, you can figure it out pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like the razor and 10 blades is $27, I think, $28. Uh, and then refill blades are like $3 for 10. Wow. And then you can actually send back the, the used blades to the, to the vendor and they will recycle them into reusable travel utensils. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. I actually just made a note about that because when the website goes back online, people are always asking me why I don't sell razors and I'm just not into it. So I'm going to link to you on my website. Like if you're interested in razors, pick them up here. Yeah. Those sound cool. What other kind of cool products do you have? Uh, Well, one of the easy swaps is bamboo toothbrushes. So, you know, we all brush our teeth or hopefully you're brushing your teeth. And I mean, if you care about soap, you're probably brushing your teeth too. Probably. Yeah. (laughs) And um, so that's a super easy swap is just a toothbrush made out of bamboo instead of plastic. Uh, We have dryer balls instead of dryer sheets. So they're essentially these wool balls that are about the size of a baseball. And you just toss at least three of them in with your laundry in the dryer and they soften your clothes. They reduce static. You can add essential oils to them. If you want that added freshness, you would typically get with dryer sheets, but then you don't have the chemicals or the waste that you would have with dryer sheets. And apparently dryer sheets are also really bad for your dryer. Um, Yeah. I've, I've heard horror stories of like dryer like filters getting like clogged and like potentially starting fires. So don't do that. Oh, we have so many. It's, it's a lot of like refillable stuff too. So pretty much all of like the, the bar stuff that you make for me, we also have a liquid refillable option of it. So shampoo, conditioner, dish soap, body wash, all of those kinds of things. We have deodorant in a cardboard tube, which is great. So, um, it's, aluminum free, it's baking soda free, and then it's in a compostable tube, which is really exciting. Yeah. I actually had to uh, bite the bullet and start putting my deodorants into cardboard tubes as well, because all of my eco shops up in Seattle that stock them are like, people want a tube. We'll just get a tube. So we're doing that now. One of the things I saw um, that I'm going to pick up when it gets closer to uh, warm season that I thought was just such an ingenious thing in your uh, product line is the reusable um, water balloons. Yes. Those looked so cool. And like half of the, the biggest pain in the ass when you're actually doing the you know, water balloon fight or whatever is filling up the balloons anyway. Right. right? So you just get a couple dozen of those, put them in a couple bins across the, you know, yard or whatever. And it's complete chaotic fun the whole time. 
right? You just, then you just like dip it in the bucket and keep throwing. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It doesn't have to stop. I thought that was the most ingenious thing ever. And I saw that post and I'm like, I'm getting those for the summer. That's a mm-hmm. brilliant idea. Yep. I love those for sure. And you have like the, the reusable uh, dish or uh, paper towels, paper towels mm-hmm. that actually roll up onto the roll. How cute is that? So we've started, we've made the decision that those are only going to be available around like Thanksgiving. And then we're just going to make like one batch a year and then have them until they sell out. So we currently have four rolls in stock, but once they're gone, they're gone until holiday season. Cause yeah. I make them all by hand. I, I do. Either. So they, yeah. they take a lot of time to make. And so rather than just like constantly having that in the back of my head of like, Oh, I should really be making more on paper towels. I can focus on the other parts of the business that I also really enjoy. And then have that be a nice, like holiday bonus. Right. I think that makes all the sense in the world. And I, there's nothing wrong with sort of guiding your consumers as to, okay, this is when you need to buy these things for your own sanity. That's why I just stopped with so many of my products. I'm like, I only restock these three times a year. Just deal with it, get it in, but that's good. And also, you know, if they're reusable, you know, paper towels, they, you don't need to be buying. That's not something that people are going to continue buying. You know, that's not a, well, it's not a consumable anymore. This is something that's meant to last you for a long time. So I love that. I did not know you made those though. That's super cool. I do. Yes. So yeah, around the time that I start making them, my living room looks like it's snowed inside because they have terry cloth on them, which just like sheds everywhere when you're cutting it and sewing it and washing it and you know all of the things. So yeah, I basically have to like, rake my my living room floor before I vacuum because it's just oh hard. my god but, yeah. yeah but they're they're a lot of fun to make uh they just take a lot of time where do you see a drop in the ocean well a couple of things because obviously you need to tell us where we can find you but first where do you see a drop in the ocean going over the next you know few years I'm not gonna I don't want your five-year plan you know whatever that's just such a weird question to ask but where would you like the where would you like the business to be in the next couple of years? Yeah. So I really like the system that we have in place right now of being basically a hundred percent online. I have essentially stopped doing all in-person things. I've done like three in the last six months. Um, and I think that that works really well for my personality and it also helps, you know, Pre COVID, when I was doing a lot of in person events, I had a very limited space. Like I, I sold off of a like eight foot table, so all of my products had to fit on an eight foot table. And now that I don't have those confines, I'm able to add more products and and you know do it in a more efficient way than I than I was before. So I don't see myself going back to doing a lot of in person markets or opening a brick and mortar or any of that, just sticking online. Um, But, you know, I would like to get all the inventory out of my living room. So, you know, I I would like to continue to grow the inventory to be more of like a one-stop shop for people. Um, But I want it to keep growing to reach more people. I want to be able to have employees so that I can also continue to give back to the community in that way. And we have a, we have an annual retreat that we started last year, going to our ocean conservation partners field station in Mexico. So I want to continue offering that and grow that and really just continue expanding the education piece as well and continue to find new topics to, to talk about. So really just kind of like I don't see any major shifts happening with a drop in the ocean, just kind of continuing to grow and streamline and improve upon what we're currently doing. Cause I, I think that the model is, is pretty sound. I agree. I think your business model is amazing. And I love the idea that you're not looking at doing like a brick and mortar or anything like that because you're able to reach more people with what you are doing now than really localizing it to, okay, now I have to spend all of my energy and brain power on this one thing here. Yeah. When you're all, when you're honestly better served being in the world, like you need to be able to reach everybody mm-hmm. and you need enough headspace and time in order to do that. So 
I love that. And I love the momentum going forward. And you're going to continue on with all of the awesome things because you really are awesome. And you are a very, you personally, as a human, you are a wonderful human that exists breathing in and out on the planet, but your business that was created as your brainchild is also a very important and necessary thing to have in our sphere. So I'm glad you and the business exist. Well, thank you. Now, where can we find you? Yeah. So my website is a drop in the ocean shop.com. I say it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a little long, uh, but fun fact, the domain for a drop in the ocean.com is like $6,000. So oh, no. we're terrible. sticking with shop. Yeah. Um, but then also that's where I'm at on all the socials. I'm on Instagram, a drop in the ocean shop, TikTok, a drop in the ocean shop, Facebook, a drop in the ocean shop. I'm not super active on the Facebook page, but we also have a Facebook group that's cool. a drop in the oceans eco warriors. Cool. Um, so that's a really fun group. And it's, it's not just like me posting about the shop all the time. Like people are in there asking questions and connecting with each other. And it's a really great supportive community. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also like, I'm really active in there around the time that I'm like thinking about new products or, um, you know, I'm, I'm always like asking for feedback on things. And so it's a really great way to like actually be involved with the drop in the ocean too. Right. Um, and also anytime I drop a new product, that's the first place I go. Like before I send an email or post on social media, I'm in that group, like publish product, post in Facebook group, always the first to know. I love it. That's amazing. Well, I will make sure to put all of your links below so everybody can go give you some love and check out your offerings. And I, again, if I forget, you have to remind me when it gets closer to the hot season that I, I need a bunch of those water balloons because it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for doing this with, with me. And uh, well, you started this whole crazy train. So thanks for starting the crazy train, but also thank you for letting me uh, interview you as well, because as somebody who is one of my wholesale accounts, I supply you, it's a, uh, I supply you and it's not just you as an insert, whatever it's you as a person and you as a really cool business. And so whenever I get the opportunity to promote you, I do so. So we're doing it again. Well, thank you. And I'm glad that we finally get to put a face to the uh, drop in the ocean shop.com that I've said all over the place for like the past two years. So yes, <laughs> that's the face. This is the face. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much for doing this, Christina. I super appreciate it. And uh, yeah, Sudzers go and actually, cause you did this with mine. So I'm going to do it with yours. Do you have anything that you want to tell the Sudzers? Oh, your Sudzer community makes me so happy. Um, so supportive, so happy. And I love how they are so here for you. I love that. So yeah, Sudzers, you're amazing. I love, you know, I was in a, in one of your lives, Shantine the other day, and I loved being able to, you know, be a part of your Sudzer community there and see everybody supporting you and supporting each other. And yeah. You just have a really great community. So Sudzers, keep being you, keep being, keep being awesome. Yeah, they're amazing. They, they, they are amazing. It's, I look at them every day and I'm like, oh my God, how did this happen? You guys are cool. I don't, I don't deserve you, but yeah, Sudzers, definitely go check out, uh, Christina, go check out a drop in the ocean. All of her socials are below and, uh, thank you so much, Christina, again. And there you, you have it, uh, Christina from A Drop in the Ocean, which you can find at adropintheoceanshop.com or on all social media. She's amazing. The company is amazing. Her eco warrior family is so incredible. The things that she has done to be very thoughtful and very conscious about her impact on the world through her business, she has left no stone, stone unturned. It's absolutely stunning the thought that she has put into all of this, and she deserves all of the love and all of the support in the world for this. So definitely go show her some love and support for sure. If you are interested, if you are one of my vendors in doing an interview piece like this, hey, let me know. I would appreciate that a lot. Sudzers, if you guys are interested in me interviewing you for your business, again, that's more your three content, but let me know. Drop, drop something in the comments. That would be cool. I hope you guys had as much fun with today as I did. I definitely had a lot of fun. Anytime that I get to chit chat with Christina is a good day for me. So winning all around for sure. 
I'm out of here for today, but I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.